All right, in this lesson, we will learn to solve radical equations such as these algebraically, in, in other words, without using a graphing calculator. Um, in fact, we are going to try to keep our calculator use down to a minimum by using this uh, exponent table of values, which you will be given. Um, we need to watch out for extraneous solutions, so we need to check our so-called solutions because this is the type of uh, equation where some of your solutions that you come up with won't actually work so you have to check them it is mandatory alright so um, the procedure is we need to get the radical part by itself and then we can square both sides to get rid of, of the radical so in order to get rid of the uh, 9 we need to subtract 9 from both sides so let's do that. So that's going to give us negative radical x plus 4 is equal to negative 5. Um, you see that negative, so we can't have that. So let's divide both sides by negative 1. All right, so that is going to give us the square root of x plus 4 is equal to positive 5. Now it's time to square both sides of the equation. So if I do that, all right, if I square both sides of the equation, um, squaring and the square root are inverses, so they cancel each other out. So that's just going to leave x plus 4 is equal to 25. All right, then we subtract 4 from both sides and we get x equals 21. So this is probably the answer, but we need to check it by plugging it back in and making sure it works out. The main thing is um, you can't if you plug it back in and you get an imaginary number or something, then that, you know that's a problem. So um, if I put 21 in right here, um, so that's how you check it. So I think I'll do that in purple. Okay, so this is the check part. Um, if I put the 21 in, so that's 9 minus, and I get 21 plus 4. And we're checking to see, does that really equal 4? Well, that's 9 minus, and that's the square root of 25. And that's 9 minus 5. And yes, um, 9 minus 5 does equal 4. So it checks out. So that means x equals 21 really is the solution. All right, let's look at a couple more. All right, take a look at number 2. Based on what we did on problem number 1, you should now be able to do problem number 2 by yourself. So <clears throat> instead of just copying off of me a second problem, Go ahead and pause the video right now and try to do number two by yourself. Then fire the video up and uh, see how you did. All right, I'm going to assume that you pause the video and uh, now you're ready to check your answer. Otherwise, shame on you for copying. You're better than this. Again, we need to get the radical part okay by itself that means we need to get rid of the 5 and then the 3 so we will get rid of that 5 uh, by subtracting 5 from both sides so that's going to give us 3 radical 4 minus 3x is equal to 12 then we should divide both sides by 3 to get rid of the 3 so that's going to give us the square root of 4 minus 3x is equal to 4. Now that the radical is by itself, now is the time to square both sides. All right, squaring makes the radical go away. Um, they cancel each other out. So I have 4 minus 3x is equal to 16. So now this is just a matter of solving for x. So let's just subtract 4 from both sides. So that gives us negative 3x is equal to 12. 
and we will divide both sides by negative 3. And that is going to give us x is equal to negative 4. All right, so this might be the solution, but we must check to be sure that it's not going to give us a negative number, an imaginary solution. Um, okay, so if we take negative 4 and plug it back in, so we'll just do the check right here. That would give us 3 times the square root of 4 minus 3 times negative 4 plus 5, and that's supposed to equal 17. Well, let's see. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. So far, so good. That negative worried me for a minute but now everything has turned positive so that's a good sign okay so then that's of course three times the square root of uh, four plus twelve uh, is sixteen okay so that's really just three times four plus five so that's twelve plus five oh wait why did I turn that to a sixteen I was about to say that doesn't equal 16, but I messed up on the right hand side and I started, must have been as soon as I saw that 16, I got brainwashed. Now I'm putting 12, okay. I am a lost cause. So 17 equals 17. So it does check out. So uh, x equals negative 4 is a valid solution. Okay, let's look at a couple more. All right, looking at number three. Again, uh, you should be able to do number three by yourself. So please pause the video, try to do problem number three on your own, and then start the video back up again and see how you did. Pause the video. All right, so as before, we need to get the radical part by itself, okay? So the yellow part. So let's subtract 3 from both sides. So that's going to give us the square root of x squared minus 9 is equal to 4. Now that this radical is by itself, we can go ahead and square both sides. So that's going to give us x squared minus 9 is equal to 16. Let's add 9 to both sides. So that gives us x squared is equal to 25. And of course, if we take the square root of both sides, um, which is how we unsquare things, we have to be a little bit careful right now because when you take the square root of both sides, the solution could be positive or negative. So that's going to give us x is equal to plus or minus 5. That's two separate solutions, you understand. Um, in fact, just in case um, maybe one of them is valid and one of them is extraneous, I'm going to write them separately. So instead of writing plus or minus 5, I'm going to actually go ahead and write x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. All right, so maybe they will both work, but maybe only one of them will work. All right, so let's check. Um, if we check x equals 5, then that gives us, um, well, we've got 5 squared, right? Minus 9 plus 3, and that's supposed to equal 7. Um, but that is 25 minus 9 plus 3, and that is 16 plus 3, <clears throat> and that is 4 plus 3, and that is in fact 7. So that checks out. Um, 
Now, when we begin to check x equals negative 5, I'm not going to do the whole thing because what we see very quickly is this. If we have the square root of negative 5 squared minus 9, Well, negative 5 squared is 25, just like positive 5 squared is 25. Um, so the rest of it is going to be identical. So that's going to wind up being the exact same thing. So we do have two valid solutions, 5 and negative 5. So we could have left it plus or minus 5 if we had wanted to. Okay, um, what about number 4? Now, notice on number 4, we have um, fifth root instead of um, square root. But that's okay. It works the same way. Um, also, notice that we have a radical on both sides. Um, but this one is still going to be easy because it's the same root on both sides with nothing extra. So um, let's just go ahead and do the fifth power on both sides. If we do the fifth power, then um, these radicals are going to go away. So that's going to very quickly give us 8x plus 11 is equal to 5x minus 4. And uh, if we subtract 5x from both sides, that gives us 3x plus 11 is equal to negative 4. Subtract 11 from both sides. So that gives us 3x is equal to negative 15. And divide both sides by 3. And that gives us x equals negative 5. So this might be the solution. Um, but we just need to make sure it really gives us a true statement. So if we uh, take this and plug it back in, um, let's see, so we'll check it. So that's going to give us the fifth root of 8 times negative 5 plus 11 is equal to the fifth root of 5 times negative 5 minus 4. Okay, so that's going to give us the fifth root of, um, so that's negative 40 plus 11, and this is going to be negative 25 minus 4. All right, so negative 40 plus 11 is negative 29. So we have the fifth root of negative 29. And negative 25 minus 4 is also negative 29. Okay, so either way we have the fifth root of negative 29. Now this is not undefined or anything. Um, you can take the odd root of a negative number, no problem. It will be some kind of decimal. Um, but this is enough. It's the same exact thing on both sides, so this checks out. Okay, number five. You should be able to do problem number five by yourself. So please pause the video and give number five a try. Then start the uh, video again and see how you did. Please pause the video now. All right, again, um, even though this is cube root, the procedure remains the same. We need to get the radical part by itself first. So what you want to do is subtract 10 from both sides. Get rid of that. So that's going to give us negative 3 times the cube root of 2x plus 5. And that's going to equal negative 21. So then we will divide both sides by this negative 3 here. And that is going to give us the cube root of 2x plus 5 
is equal to 7. Now that we got the cube root by itself, we can do the power. So this is a cube root, so we will do the third power on both sides. Okay, and here's where that table comes in handy um, because we are not allowed to use our calculator. So the cube root and the third power cancel each other out. So over here we have 2x plus 5. Now 7 to the third power, if we use that chart, okay, 7 to the third power is 343. Okay, so that's 343. Now we can subtract <clears throat> 5 from both sides. So we have 2x is equal to 338. Alright, and uh, we need to divide both sides by 2 to get x by itself. And that gives us x is equal to 169. All right, I will leave it to you to plug that back in and make sure that it makes a true statement. Um, last but not least, number six. Um, this all looks very strange, but it's really the same thing as number four, when we had the radical on either side um, just here they're both on the same side but we can simply add the cube root of 3x plus 2 to both sides of the equation to sort of move this one on over to the right hand side cube root of 3x plus 2 okay that way these are gone and balance is restored to the universe so we have the cube root of 6x minus 5 equals the cube root of 3x plus 2. Uh, since the rest of the problem is just like problem number 4 that we just did, this would be a good place for you to pause the video and uh, finish the problem on your own. And then uh, play the rest of the video to check your answers. Please pause the video right now, now, now. Now, since they're the same root, and that's all we have is a root, um, all we have to do is uh, cube both sides like this. All right, and that is going to make the uh, radical go away. So that's going to give us 6x minus 5 is equal to 3x plus and then uh, we can go ahead and solve it from there. So it's minus 3x on both sides. Okay, um, so that's going to give us 3x minus 5 is equal to 2. Add 5 to both sides. And that gives me 3x is equal to 7. And divide both sides by 3. And that gives me x is equal to 7 over 3. And again, I'm going to leave it to you to go ahead and uh, um, plug that back in and make sure it gives you a true statement.